So the season is not getting any easier for the Texas Longhorns because today, for the third week in a row, they blow a lead at halftime this week to Baylor. We have got to talk about this game because there are some really perplexing things attached to this game. What this means for Baylor going forward, what this means for Texas going forward, we're going to break it all down. Before we do, as always, y'all know the drill. I want to hear from you. Hop down to the comments. Give me a Y for yes, N for no. Are you surprised at how Baylor handled Texas today? And let me know what you're thinking. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification. I do constant college football content. I'd love to have you a part of the channel. And if you enjoy these videos, be sure to like and comment down below. Those interactions, though they're small, are really massive to content creators, such as myself, and getting both picked up and maintained by the YouTube algorithm. But with all that being said, let's jump straight into this, because like I said in the intro, there's some perplexing things attached to this game, but let's talk about what's not perplexing, and that is that Dave Aranda's having a really solid season with Baylor this year. Only one loss, and Baylor's a really interesting team within the scape of the Big 12, especially moving past this game into next week, a game that I think a lot of people are going to be really interested in watching. I know I am. I cannot wait when Baylor takes on OU, but let's focus back in on this week because Aranda and the Bears really rallied after halftime and that's been a problem we have seen plague the Texas Longhorns for the past three games. Texas has built up a lead in the first half and then after halftime they fail to make the requisite adjustments after the team they're playing has made successful adjustments and it's one thing to do it once because then you can learn from your mistake and say okay well we have to adjust better the second time is absolute vindication that you must adjust better but at the third time I just don't know how much more there is to say adjustments have got to come in they must be better at halftime and that's something that the Texas staff I hope will look to try and answer quickly because probably the most incredible thing about this game was how effective Baylor was at stopping Bijan Robinson. Bijan Robinson rushed 17 times for only 43 yards. And look, we can say, oh, Bijan didn't have a good game today. And look, Baylor really limited him. That is one of the more talented players in the whole of college football. Certainly one of the most talented running backs in the whole of college football. And I say that to point out, hats off to Baylor for being able to limit him in the way they were. In fact, if you look at Texas's rushing total, they were held to 102 yards on 29 attempts, which look, if you're looking at how Texas wants to be successful, the rush is absolutely necessary to open up everything. But even in a day where Bijan was limited, Texas still had moments in this game, though I say moments because they weren't able to do it consistently for four quarters. The offensive line continues to be a problem for the Longhorns. And look, this is a game where we knew going into this that Baylor has a good defense, a defense that I'm very excited to see take on the Sooners next week because it's going to be very telling for both squads. But we knew going into this game that Baylor had a solid defense and they were going to look to take things away from Texas. If you're a Texas coach, you have to understand this, and most certainly they did. But the question was, how are you going to be able to mitigate them taking something away from you? And if they can successfully do so, what's plan B? And in fairness, Xavier Worthy had himself a day. Xavier Worthy has been a phenomenal freshman wide receiver for Texas, but also one of the more phenomenal freshman wide receivers in the nation. Today, four receptions, 115 yards, the long touchdown. He's having a really good campaign, but it's not mattering in the way you would hope it would. His impact is being felt, but it's not being translated into wins because Texas has a myriad of other issues. The offensive line, I point once again, has just been a unit that's very hard to watch for the Longhorns, and Baylor does have a good defense, but this isn't the first time we've had this conversation about Texas's offensive line. And at the end of the day, you have to really question what the locker room is going to be like right now. Hopefully they can keep it together, but I can only imagine how tough it is having three weeks in a row where you've built up a lead at halftime only to have that lead dissipate and ultimately lose the game. It's one thing when it happens in the Red River rivalry to your rival Oklahoma that's that's demoralizing but we've seen all sorts of craziness in the Red River rivalry I think everybody could just chalk it up to simple hey that's the sort of game where the unexpected is to be expected the next week is when it starts to set off the red flags and now I mean if those red flags aren't at full mast I just don't know what else to do if you look at Baylor's side of this, they get a really good win for their program. Texas coming into this game, even though they have their deficiencies, has still been a successful offense at times this year. And Baylor was able to mitigate one of the nation's best playmakers in B. John Robinson. I talked about that earlier. 
I'm very interested to see how Baylor moves forward from this. Because next week, when you look at the Baylor Bears taking on Oklahoma, who, as of right now, I haven't checked the score here recently, was absolutely handling Texas Tech, which, good for them, they really needed to handle an opponent because they're a very talented team, but they needed to play a complete game of football going into the bye week, especially when you look forward and you're taking on this Baylor team that has a really solid defense. It's good to see Oklahoma really capitalizing on a moment, and that's going to make this game against Baylor all the more interesting intriguing to watch. But you have to wonder if this is a team in Baylor that is really starting to build something. If they can keep Dave Aranda there, Baylor could benefit massively from Texas and OU leaving the Big 12 going to the SEC because they're playing very high quality football right now. That is ultimately why I'm very interested in hearing from you. What are your takeaways from the Texas Longhorns? Because right now, this is a team where I was high on the coaching staff coming in. I was high on even Texas's expectations coming into this year. And let me redefine that because in no way was I thinking they were going to win the Big 12 championship or make the college football playoffs. I just thought they would be a competitive team throughout the year. They could scheme for some things when you look at some of the playmakers they have, but I didn't imagine that the offensive line would be as porous as it is, and I didn't imagine that Sark would have the troubles that he's had. And right now, they have got to almost look at themselves as in they are in a total rebuild, which is not, not at all where the Texas fans want to hear that they're at, but that might just be the truth. I'm very interested in hearing from y'all. Hop down to the comments. Let me know what you thought about this game and the games after. That's it. See you.